Hey, Ivy. Make sure you change the bed sheets today. It's summer. We're sweating. I can't bear the thought of going a week without changing them. I'm sorry. I'll change them later. Have you been slacking off recently? I understand that having a baby is hard, but you're going to have to balance both soon. I know, but I've been lacking sleep lately. You understand, right, Aaron? Mike has been crying a lot at night. I really can't sleep. Don't you think it's because you're not taking her out for walks during the day? They say tiring out a baby makes them sleep, right? There's her health and the timing to consider. And I've been trying various ways to stop the night crying. Even when I do, she still cries. But being a stay-at-home mom, you should be able to handle the housework, right? I think you're being a bit too lax. We've been having a lot of ready-made meals and sometimes we even order delivery. You should at least make a proper meal. Well, if you would watch Anne, I could do that. When I come home, I want to eat right away. Why do I have to wait when I come home starving? You're home all the time. Preparing food is part of a housewife's job, right? Take into account that we have a baby. I've only given birth three months ago. I've only been a mother for three months, so I can't be perfect right away. Only three months? It's already been three months. I was understanding when it was one month, but shouldn't you be getting used to it by now? She's already passed her 100th day, you know. At least stay home on your days off. Then I can prepare meals in advance and I can focus on housework. So, even on my days off, I don't have any freedom, even though I'm working every day. What can I say to that? I do appreciate you working, but I'm taking care of Anne 24-7. That's expected of a mother, right? Isn't it expected of a father, too? Look, I'm earning money to support the two of you, and now you want me to work even more? I'm not asking you to work. I want you to help with the child rearing. I am doing that. Not just interacting with her when you have free time. What? Are you trying to pick a fight? Well, it's true. How many minutes do you think I have to take a bath since Anne was born? Less than 10 minutes. Aaron, it's not enough to just be there playing smartphone games when Anne is asleep. I'm the one always waking up when she cries at night. You want me, who has work the next day, to look after her? You have the nerve to complain about lack of sleep when you can nap during the day, Ivy. On top of it, Anne's crying at night already wakes me up. I can't just sleep whenever I want, you know? Even so, you get to relax on the couch while holding Anne, right? You're out of line, trying to dump childcare onto me after I've worked all day. I'm doing my part, loving Anne as much as I can. I think childcare is a responsibility for both of us. If you were away on business or something, I'd understand. But Aaron, you're home often enough. That's why I'm tired. I'm tired too, you know. You're really spoiled, Ivy. There are people out there who manage to raise children all by themselves. Don't talk about not being able to balance housework and childcare when you're not even working. Why do you say that? Alright, enough. Talking with you will only eat into my rest time. Just remember to change the sheets and start cooking proper meals. No shortcuts. Aaron, please. Come home. What? Why? Why? Like I said this morning, both Anne and I have a fever. It's going up and I can't sleep while taking care of Anne. If you're feverish, then Anne should be quiet too, right? She starts crying right away, so I have to hold her. I don't want to go back to a house full of germs. What am I supposed to do if I catch your cold? I have an important presentation next week. I can't afford to get sick. Then take us to the hospital. Bring out the car. It's Saturday today. Regular clinics are already closed. There's an emergency hospital. I have a fever of 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Anne also has a high fever. Then stop texting and rest quickly. I can't. That's why I'm asking for your help. You're just out having fun on your day off, aren't you? 
Why won't you come home? Listen, Ivy. The reason I'm out is that you're sick and can't make lunch. Can't you see that I'm going out of my way to let you rest? I'm trying to keep it quiet so you can rest. Aren't you supposed to take care of me and Anne when we're sick? What do you mean by supposed to? Don't force your standards on me. Anne's suffering too, you know. It's not like everything gets resolved once I come home. You're being too persistent. I'm not going to rely on you anymore. Says the one who can't survive without relying on me. I can't consider someone who doesn't even take care of their sick wife and child as family. Oh, really? Then live without relying on me. I'm so pissed off. I won't come home tonight. You two are sick. I don't want to catch it. I'll stay at a hotel. Then I won't do the house chores anymore. You live without relying on me too. Ivy, I haven't seen you around lately. What are you doing? Stop slacking off on the house chores. Is that all you've got to say after finally getting in touch? You're not worried about the high fever I had? If you wanted me to worry, you should do your own job properly. Where did you go? You're able to go out and have fun even though you're skipping chores because of a cold. Being a housewife is indeed quite a privilege. You should be the one to stop it. What's with your tone? Aaron, your wife and child are gone. What? Who are you? I'm your mother. Uh, Mom, you're lying, right? No, it's true. What do you mean Ivy and Anne are gone? You left a seriously ill Ivy and went out to have fun, didn't you? Afterwards, I got a call from Ivy and I quickly took her to the hospital. Both of them were admitted immediately. Uh, then both of them are fine, right? Ivy and Anne are alive, right? It's your fault for leaving them alone. Enough with that. Don't joke around with such a stupid lie. They're fine, right? If you have the energy to get mad, why didn't you go to them immediately? Ivy and Anne are alive. But they were really in a dangerous situation. If we had taken them to the hospital any later, we wouldn't know what would have happened. It was just a cold. It's impossible to lose a life because of it. Ivy was already in pretty bad shape. She didn't have any energy left due to lack of sleep. When I arrived at your place, you were passed out, you know? Uh... Ivy was down, and because of that, Anne hadn't been fed for quite some time. If I hadn't received the call, it could have been the worst case scenario. You don't understand it at all. And yet, you left them alone. I think you've done something unimaginable as a human being. Are Ivy and Anne still in the hospital? Or are they back home? Sorry, I can't tell you. Wait until you hear from Ivy. Why isn't Ivy contacting me? If you're texting from Ivy's phone, she's there, right? For her aunt. Ivy's still not feeling well and doesn't have the energy to deal with you. If you think you did something wrong, wait and accept whatever you're told. Reflect on what you've done to Ivy so far. Ivy, please come back. We're not done talking. I've understood your feelings. You don't understand a thing. Just when I thought you were coming home, you handed me the divorce papers and left the house. Isn't that a bit selfish? You understand why I want a divorce, right? It's because I didn't take care of you and Anne. That was just the last straw. I've been thinking about this since Anne was born. Why don't you help with raising the child? You didn't even help with the household chores. I was worn out after giving birth and you were entirely uncooperative. Well, I had work too. You could have helped with childcare and housework on weekends, couldn't you? Yet, you left it all to me because I'm a stay-at-home mom. Sorry, but I can't raise a child with someone who can't cooperate. Wait a minute. Let me apologize first. Even if you apologize now, I don't feel like forgiving you. 
Ivy, I'm sorry. I heard from my mother and I realized that I've been an idiot. I saw the messages. You didn't even worry. You told me to stop slacking off on housework. That's because I didn't know that you and Anne were in the hospital. Even if we weren't hospitalized, I wouldn't have forgiven you. I shuddered when I thought about what could happen if we get sick again. Who needs a husband or a father who won't help when you're in trouble? I was thoughtless. I took it lightly, thinking it was just a cold, just a fever. People can die from a fever, you know. There can also be lasting complications. I'm sorry. I'll take proper responsibility in parenting from now on. So I'm asking for just one more chance. You've had more than three months of chances already. It's strange that you only noticed when I mentioned divorce. I've told you countless times. I've asked for help with the housework and child rearing. And yet, Aaron, you never lifted a finger. It's your fault. I... I was taking Ivy for granted. After that, I had a talk with my mom about how hard parenting really is, and I truly regretted my behavior. Did you really reflect on your actions? I couldn't see it that way. You had said you would attend a discussion today, yet the house was a total mess. If you had really reflected, I thought at least you'd have done some cleaning. It wasn't an environment for me and Anne to come back to, was it? I... I was busy and fell asleep. But you had the whole weekend, didn't you? In the end, nothing has changed. You just assumed I would come back anyway, didn't you? And that's why you left the house in such a state. You thought you'd let me clean up after I came back, right? No, I thought we could do it together. See, that's precisely what I can't stand. If you really feel sorry, at least you'd have done some cleaning. In the end, your apologies are just empty words. I know that even if I came back, I'd be the one doing all the housework and parenting. I'll do my part. Please, Ivy, come back. I do really care about you and Anne. If we really mattered to you, you wouldn't have left us when we had a high fever. I... I thought it was just a cold. It's impossible to continue with someone who leaves his family in distress and doesn't come home. It's not about it being just a cold. I can't forgive you for doing nothing when we were asking for help. Especially since Anne was just a baby. I'm sorry. I'm truly sorry. But it's cruel to divorce when Anne has just been born. I want to live with Anne. I want to be involved in her life as a father. We don't need a father who doesn't care about his child. Can you stop making me repeat myself? But being a single mother is tough. Ivy, you said you didn't want to re-enter the workforce for a while, right? You wanted to be with our child as much as possible when she's small. If we don't divorce, you can stay at home, right? I'm going to get child support from you. My parents and your mother will support us until Anne turns three, so we'll be fine. But it's still tough to raise a child alone. You said so yourself. I know there are people out there who raise children on their own. I'm prepared for that now. I'm sorry. I truly intend to change from here on out. You don't have to do anything for me anymore. But if you have any sense of responsibility as a father to Anne, don't cut her out. So, you're saying we're getting divorced? I really regret everything. I'm trying to change. I don't have any trust or love left for you. I can't live without you and Anne. I keep going because you and Anne are here with me. Please, don't abandon me. You were the one who abandoned us first. You're the one who told me not to rely on you. Don't expect me to forgive you now. You really do have a spoiled way of thinking. We've had several discussions about divorce since then. We've agreed to separate for one year now. Despite the awful things he's done, he's still our daughter's father. I thought it wouldn't matter if he had no relationship with me anymore. But if he has any responsibility as a father, I want him to face our daughter sincerely. Of course we plan to divorce after a year. 
but we've decided to give him a chance as a father. Ever since we separated, my husband visits our home every day and takes care of Anne. He's honestly more like a father now than when we were living together. That doesn't mean I'm ready to forgive what he's done and said. I know there will be more difficulties ahead, but I want to establish a solid foundation for life now. I intend to create an environment where I can raise my daughter on my own. And if I ever feel it's too hard to do it alone, I'll ask my parents and my mother-in-law for support. I'll make sure to take good care of my daughter so she doesn't feel lonely. I'm sure my relationship with my husband will never go back to the way it was. But as a father, as a mother, I want to give everything I can as a parent to our daughter with all my heart. Good morning, Debbie. Are you still sleeping, sis? How have you been? Why are you suddenly contacting me? I'm up, of course. You're up early. I heard that the ugly need to wake up early because they are super busy at work. Don't be rude. Besides, today is a holiday. Is that so? I've rarely had to work. So weekdays, weekends, it doesn't make a difference to me. I mean, you know how cute I am. So I've never had a need to work, get a job. Is that so? So why are you contacting me? And you know, my fiancé is really wealthy. So I have no problems in the world. Can you just get to the point already? Can't you tell? I just want to thank you. For what? For introducing me to a super wealthy man like Eddie. As I recall, I didn't exactly introduce you to. Really? Is that how you remember it? I remember. In the beginning, Eddie was your fiancé. <laughs> I forgot my bad. You really are the worst. I cannot begin to understand why you would contact me to tell me something like this. It took Eddie three years to propose to you, Debbie. But with me, all it took was three months. There must have been issues in your relationship. And with you. <laughs> Is that so? That very well may be so, but it doesn't make a difference to me anymore. I still don't know why you would want to say all of this to me. I just want to express my gratitude, Debbie. I never imagined. And I would be able to get married to such a rich, handsome man so quickly. You're the reason. I'm so happy. Thank you, thank you. Fine. See you. Wait. Are you still jealous? Jealous? Of whom? Me, of course. Because I'm so beautiful. I know you've been jealous of me in the past. Are you still jealous? That your beautiful little sister found love and happiness? Before dumpy old me? <laughs> Are you pulling out your hair? I don't care anymore. I've accepted it. Really? I know that's a lie. I know you're really jealous of me. You're so persistent. I really don't care. I'll admit when Eddie and I first broke up, I was sad. And to let my friends, family, and everyone at work know the wedding was canceled was really embarrassing. But it was three months ago. I've gotten over it. Ugh, stop acting so mature. I bet it's eating you up inside. <laughs> Lastly, let me share this wonderful news. Our wedding is today. How do you feel now, miss? I'm so mature, I don't care that my sister stole my fiancé. That's weird. Haven't you heard? About what? And can't you be more surprised? It was really difficult not saying anything until the wedding day. 
the wedding you wanted but couldn't have. You know the church you and Eddie were planning to hold your wedding? We're having it there. Is that so? Congratulations. Oh, I know you don't really mean it. I know it's killing you. This is how life goes. Beautiful people always get married first. I wonder when it will be your turn. If your turn will ever come. I couldn't care less. It's none of your business, Shelly. It doesn't concern you. It concerns me. Because, well, you know, I feel sorry for you. I mean, while I'm happy, you're so miserable. It would make me feel a tiny bit guilty. I know that's a lie. Oh, <laughs> you saw right through me. I don't feel guilty at all. I feel victorious. Oh, and Debbie, sorry about not inviting you today. You know how Eddie's parents are about appearances and all. They didn't want you, his ex fiance to come. As you may ruin the wedding. So I couldn't invite you. It's fine. I wouldn't have attended even if you had invited me. You don't have to put up a strong front. Anyways, I've gotten bored of teasing you. So I guess I'll start to get ready. Is that so? See ya, my sister. The loser. <laughs> Debbie? What did you do? How can you? What are you talking about? I don't understand this at all. Why did none of our relatives attend? It isn't normal. What did you do? I know you had something to do with this, Debbie. I can't get a hold of Mom. What's going on? Really? They didn't attend. Not a single relative? Yes, not a single relative. The table for our relatives, it was empty. A total of zero. That's why I had asked you before if you hadn't heard anything. I don't understand. I didn't mean it as revenge or anything serious like that, but I contacted all our relatives before your wedding. What did you tell them? And you know, Mom, she didn't think your wedding was, well, appropriate under the circumstances and was really troubled on what she should do. So after speaking with Mom, we contacted all of our relatives. Contacted all of our relatives? What did you say to them? That Shelley's husband-to-be was engaged to me just a month ago. We explained what you did. To steal him from me. If they were to attend your wedding, we wanted them to understand and accept these circumstances. So they could truly wish you all the best for your future. Even under these circumstances. Well, how could you? No one told me anything. I thought mom or dad would have told you about it. Don't put it like that. I haven't been home recently. I've been spending all my time at Eddie's apartment. I presumed that naturally everyone would come to my wedding. Mom said she contacted you. No way. How did she contact me? Mom? You know Mom doesn't use WhatsApp and always contacts us via email. Have you forgotten? Was it like that? That? I've always lived at home, so we spoke face to face. I don't recall ever getting an email from her. Anyhow, she told me she informed you of everything via email. She wrote how we're going to cut off all ties to you. You've got to be lying. No, I'm looking at her email now. That she no longer wants to have anything to do with me? 
There's no way that's possible. Why? I don't understand. It's not like a younger sibling took the older sibling's toy or something. You stole my fiancé. I'm sure they are embarrassed by your actions. You dragged our family through the gutter. Mom, Dad, me, even yourself. Even then, parents have an obligation to be happy for their daughter. Mom was really troubled. I feel bad for putting her through that. So we decided to use the compensation money that Eddie's family gave us and are in Europe right now on a family vacation. What? Why? How? What? And mom and dad, they've moved. They are not going to tell you their new address. What are you saying? I can't understand a single thing. All of us are going to sever all ties to you. Come again? It doesn't make any sense. Just because I got married. It isn't just that. You wanted to get married to my fiancé. Don't you think you crossed a line? Don't say that. I never had that intention. I saw your handsome boyfriend and I was just teasing, messing around. Well, it was a blessing for me to see Eddie's true colors before we got married. To hook up with my very own sister. He is just as bad as you. It's all Eddie's fault. There's no reason for you all to abandon me. By the way, were Eddie's parents okay? What are you talking about? You know how concerned they are about appearances. Weren't they upset when they saw none of the bride's relatives attended? Well, they weren't happy. But Eddie and I are spending the night at the plaza. So we don't have to deal with them. Eddie is at his parents' house now, but it's only to pick up his stuff. Now that you mention it, he is a little late coming back. If you don't mind, I guess it's fine. But you know how his mother is. I wonder what she must be saying to Eddie. Wait a minute. <gasps> Debbie! I just received a text saying he wants to break up. From Eddie? Right now, on WhatsApp, Eddie's parents are saying, I've ruined their reputation? So he wants to end things with me? But you already filed your marriage papers, right? We were going to do it first thing tomorrow morning. Our marriage is not legal yet. What does this mean? Could it be that I, in all my beauty was dumped could it be i couldn't care less but i can't imagine how eddie who is a mama's boy would go against her wishes just to marry you shelly actually at today's wedding a lot of my friends didn't come as well eddie's mom stopped the reverend in the middle of the ceremony is that so Eddie's parents told the Reverend that there's been some mistake, and they were really sorry, but we needn't proceed with the ceremony. She told the wedding staff to cancel everything, but we would of course still pay for everything. Isn't that your responsibility? I received a text saying I need to pay for everything. Is that so? <laughs> Why are you laughing? It isn't funny. There's no way I could pay for such a luxurious wedding. I can't pay for all of the expenses. Did Eddie's parents say they would pay for it? Originally they did, but now they've changed their mind and want me to pay for everything. Isn't that insane? It's because they were embarrassed. And you, Shelley, are the reason they were embarrassed. Under these circumstances, it isn't unreasonable for them to expect you to pay some type of compensation. I think you owe them something for what you put them through. There's no way I can afford it. I'm unemployed, remember? I don't even have experience doing part-time work. The only work I've done is 
on my beauty, and that was to snag a rich, handsome husband. What am I supposed to do? How am I to know? It's your own fault. Why don't you beg Eddie for a discount? Even with a discount, there's no way I could pay. I've never had much savings, so I'll have to borrow it from Dad. But does Dad have this much in his savings? I still haven't paid him back for the money I borrowed before. You've got to be kidding. There's no way he's going to lend you any more money. Huh? Why do you think he'll say no? I won't know until I ask him. I know. As I said before, all of us are severing our ties with you. We've moved. We won't ever see you again. We'll live happily ever after, as a family. Wait, don't abandon me! Shelly, get a job and live your own life. Don't ever contact me again. Goodbye, you backstabbing, black-hearted loser. Shelly apologized and asked Eddie to lower the amount she had to pay. But Eddie's mom wouldn't accept her request. So Shelly had to pay the full amount for all the wedding expenses. She was sued for the amount of the wedding. And Eddie kicked her out of his apartment the very next day. So she took out a loan to pay for the wedding. And tried to find a job where boarding was included. But with little work experience, no one would hire her. As a result... With beauty being her only asset, she got a job as an escort.